In this problem, we're told a brick is dropped, zero initial speed, from the roof of a building. The brick strikes the ground in 1.9 seconds. You may ignore air resistance, so the brick is in free fall. A, how tall, in meters, is the building? B, what is the magnitude of the brick's velocity just before it reaches the ground? And I'm not going to do C, you can do that on your own. So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So we have this brick, it's going to be falling from the roof of a building. So imagine we have this building here, and we've got this brick, it's going to be falling off this building. So uh, it's going to have zero initial speed. So the initial velocity of the brick, v sub zero, is going to be zero meters per second, right? Because they tell us that it has zero initial speed, which just means v sub zero equals zero. It's going to be falling from this roof, and this brick is going to fall all the way down. It's going to fall down, and it's going to strike the ground in 1.9 seconds. And so we're trying to find how tall in meters is the building. So the length of this building right here. And I'm going to call that delta y, the change in y. You could just call it y. I'm just going to call it delta y, though. So delta y. And then we're also trying to find for b, the magnitude of the brick's velocity just before it reaches the ground. So the velocity right here, we're going to try and find that, too. So let's go ahead and write down what we're given first. So I'm going to write it up here, given. So what are we told? First off, we're told the initial velocity, v sub 0, is 0 meters per second, right? So v sub 0 equals 0 meters per second. We're told the time it's going to take to hit the ground, right? So our other variable time, so t is going to be equal to 1.9 seconds. And what are we told? Well, we're told that acceleration, well, we're not directly told, but it's implied since this is free fall and we're moving in the y direction, that acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's just something that's implied in free fall problems. So that's just something you have to know. It's always going to be minus 9.8 unless specified differently. So what are we trying to find for A? So let's go ahead and we'll start with A. How tall in meters is the building? So we're trying to find this length right here, which I'm calling delta y. So I'm going to write delta y equals question mark. So that's what we're solving for. Keep in mind, this is one dimension, right? So we're only focusing on the y direction. So here are our kinematic equations on the right. Uh, I have delta x here. Just pretend it's delta y. It works the same exact way. So take a look at the variables we're given. So we're given v sub 0, we're given t, we're given a, and we're trying to find delta y. Which equation should we use? Well, notice uh, the fourth one does not contain t, so we're not going to use that one. Notice the first one does not contain delta y, so we're not going to use that one. And then the second one, uh, it doesn't contain acceleration, so we're not going to use that one. So the only one left is the third one. So we're going to go ahead and use that one. So just take our variables, plug it in, and we're going to be solving for delta y. right? And that's going to be our change in the height, and then we can find the height of the building based off that. So let's go ahead and plug stuff in. So delta y, uh, we don't know, that's what we're solving for, equals the initial velocity, which is 0, times t, which is 1.9. 0 times anything is 0, so I'm just going to leave it as 0, plus 1 half times a, which we know is minus 9.8. So times minus 9.8 times t squared. So t is 1.9 squared. So if you go ahead and do this, 1 half times minus 9.8 times 1.9 squared, you're going to get the change in y, which is going to be minus 17.689. So you can round this however you want. I'm just going to leave it as this number. So this right here is going to be our change in y, not the height of the building, right? So our change in y is here at 17.689 meters, and then we go to zero, right? So what you want to do is if you solve for the change in y, essentially it's going to be positive, right? Because the change in our distance is this, but the total height of that is just the positive version. So really the height of the building, uh, a, is just going to be equal to 17.689, and then notice the units we're using. We're using meters, correct? So it's going to be 17. 0.689 meters. That's going to be your answer to A. Let's go ahead and move on to B. So B, what are they asking us for? The magnitude of the brick's velocity just before it reaches the ground. So notice how they're asking for magnitude. So when we find the velocity, uh, it's going to be positive because magnitude can only be positive. So let's take a look at the variables we have and then determine what we're going to solve for. So notice how we're solving for V. So this equation right here does not have V or the final velocity is what we call V. So it doesn't have it. Uh, and then we can use many of the other ones. I think most of them work, but let's go ahead and use the first one. I just think it's the easiest. You could choose a different one if you want, but we're going to use the first one. So it's v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. And notice how we have all these variables. We have a right here. We have t, uh, and we have v sub 0. So we can solve for v. So it's going to be v equals v sub 0, which we know is 0. So I'm just going to leave it. a is minus 9.8. So minus 9.8 times t, which we know is 1.9. 
So if you go ahead and do this, V equals minus 9.8 times 1.9. It's going to be minus 18.62 so meters per second, right? Because velocity is measured in meters per second. So that's going to be that. So it's going to be traveling down at this speed, but they're asking for the magnitude. So that's the speed it's going down, but magnitude essentially just means the positive version uh, because the negative indicates direction. When you ask for magnitude, you don't really need the direction. So the velocity, or the answer to B, right, is going to be equal to the positive version of this, which is just 18.62 meters per second. And so I'm not going to go ahead and do C. If you want to sketch it, you can go ahead and sketch that on your own. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.